All right, guys, I'm gonna thank you for coming back for another video. As you can see, I have an empty garage bay. Um, it is Tuesday, June 19th. Um, it is approximately three days after the SN95 is gone, and I started spending money. Um, we're gonna get your guys' opinions on another video on what other shit I should be buying at this point. But if you're gonna see here, uh, my buddy Brian with the 335 uh, with a big single on it has talked me into quick jacks. I could not justify these things for the money. $1,500, I think they're fucking ridiculous and I cannot justify them. $9.99 from Costco, I still think that they are a little bit ridiculously priced, but he swears by them. He says that his life has been so much better since he's gotten them. His jack time went from almost two hours to get that car in the air is now down to a few minutes. Um, so I had to give the gentleman that picked up the SN95 my ramps that I made. So I would use those ramps, as you guys have probably seen from some prior videos, I made those ramps like 18 years ago. Um, I had to give them those ramps because we had to make ramps to ramps to ramps because that car was so low to be able to get it on the trailer. Um, so I gave him those ramps and I was like, you know what, fuck it. I got a little bit of extra money. Um, I'm gonna try and make my life a little bit easier and get something else to try and get the car in the air. So you can see my trusty old uh, Craftsman low profile um, aluminum racing jack. I've been using this thing for years, since like late 90s, <coughs> early 2000s. It has done me good for taking it to the track. Um, it's done me good for a lot of things, but just it's not low enough to get underneath my cars. I like a jack full front end up, go on jack stands, then full back end up on jack stands. I can't exactly do that without ramps. So I'm hoping that these really expensive jacks are going to fix that problem for me. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing unboxed. I'm gonna try and get the GT500 in the air and test this out, see how well these actually do work and if they do save me time. Fingers crossed that these things were worth the money. Um, I'm, just, I'm just really hoping my life is gonna be easier because if not, I gotta make another set of ramps to get the car up because I gave away my ramps. So, we're going to go ahead and get these unboxed. I'm going to show you guys how they work. You've probably already seen how they work. But I'm going to show you little snippets. I'm not going to make this a super long video of unboxing and setting up because you guys have probably seen this a billion times already. But what we are going to see is how it's going to jack up the GT500. Um, you can see the front end is a little bit low, but with a little bit of rake, I do have a, a decent amount of space to get underneath the uh, um, side skirts. Uh, so we got to get changed, come back, and get these things unpackaged and fired up. All right, so I got the meat and the potatoes unboxed. You're going to see a whole bunch of different pads there and different thicknesses. You can see the main pump with a controller attached. Three sets of hoses, uh, one hose set, I guess. Uh, I guess that's three sets. Um, I'm assuming one for the pump to these deals and then between each other or something. I don't know how to look at it. Hose fittings, extra wheels, um, some Teflon tape, and then individually the uh, quick jacks. Um, I didn't get a chance to look these over too much, but I did notice in the one box when I was unpackaging it, a whole bunch of black shit came off, a bunch of black paint. To see right off the box there, that uh, iron or steel or whatever it is, is uh, rusted and a whole bunch of shit came off. Um, I don't know if I'm going to make a big deal about that yet. Uh, probably won't because they're going to get scratched up anyway. But again, for the price that these things are, I shouldn't be seeing that as soon as uh, I opened it up. All right, so one thing I will say about quick jacks, and I know I, I bitch about the price for these things, but I will say that I have watched their YouTube channel. They do have some, their videos are a little humorous. Um, they're easy to watch uh, for tech videos but they do have videos, they do have documentation uh, for do's, don't do's, you know, how our product is rated, blah, 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 blah. Another thing I like to say, see is that they do have an instruction booklet and this is a thick instruction booklet. If anything, I think this is actually a little overwhelming because it is that thick. Um, but if you guys know from getting other products that um, you usually don't get any instructions let alone good instructions so I will so far give them a thumbs up for having humorous videos videos that are easy to follow catch your attention tell you what to do and not do and then following up with an instruction booklet one thing I want to touch on real quick here one of the first steps uh, you need to remove 
one of these oil plugs from the side of the cylinder. You can see there I already put one on, or one of the fittings on. This is what it looks like from the packaging. Um, basically what you would need to do is you need to lift up on the quick jack a little bit, um, and then what they suggest is to put blocks underneath. Um, and that way you can hold the quick jack up. If you don't, the cylinder is fully flat and you cannot get this fitting in and spin it around. Um, so one thing to warn you of when you try and lift up on these jacks with no pressure, they're gonna have a lot of spring back. So what I ended up doing is putting my foot in like that to get this started. And then pulling up like that, just enough to get a block in, but it's gonna wanna drop right away. So be careful with your feet toes your fingers because they will snap back with quite a bit of pressure um, so just pay very close attention to that when you're putting the blocks in taking the blocks out Alright, so to get the fitting in, I just take a uh, adjustable wrench just to twist it enough that you can still get to the fitting from the top. Um, put it on a little bit of an angle. And tighten the nut up again with the adjustable. All right, got the short hoses done. You'll see I had to flip around the uh, connects on the tubes, um, flip them back towards the back sides where the wheels are, and then they route out underneath the bottom so they don't get pinched. Next step is getting the uh, longer hoses, um, getting the thread tape on them, and getting them uh, connected up with quick connects. Hose ends are done. Now we just need to get the final fittings into the pump. So you're going to have a male uh, threaded fitting to a male quick disconnect and take off these red plugs and you're going to get a little bit of seepage of um, oil out of there but basically just going to screw into there. No thread tape on this one I believe because it's got an O-ring. So you guys know how to do quick connects. Boom. Those are attached. Attached. And next thing you're going to do is hook these long lines up to the pump. Uh, I'm going to bring the pump down this way. Even though my electric is on the back side of the garage, uh, we're going to adjust some things around and get some electric down this way anyway. Um, I already released air on the one cylinder. It says to then pump them up with the compressor up to 40 to 50 PSI. So, let's see here. I think that's pumped up a little too quickly there. Thank you. 
we are on day two of the quick jacks install. Should normally take two days, but unfortunately I have a lot of things to do, so I can't exactly finish everything in one day. We have Gavin running to Dollar General to go get me some more transmission fluid. Uh, I had one quart of uh, Dexmark uh, Castrol transmission fluid. I'm having him go get me another quart. It says it calls for 2.1 quarts. Uh, so I told him if he has enough cash to grab me two quarts, go ahead and get this thing filled up in the reservoir up here. And uh, then we're gonna swap these things around because I have them oriented the wrong way. I think they were in the wrong boxes. That is going to be the driver's side. That one's going to be the passenger side. And we're going to try and get the car up in the air once we get the garage cleaned out a little bit here. All right, so the correct uh, socket is a 27 millimeter. Let's see if we can pop this bitch loose. All right, it actually was not on tight, so that is good. Get that plug out, and we'll get a funnel and drop some transmission fluid in. So it looks like it is full with just two. Uh, we'll go ahead and button this up. And if it's a little bit low, once we pressurize the lines, then I'll go back and get another quart of it. And I'll get the other one in place over here. Again, tight quarters, but chances are some of you guys are gonna have a similar size garage as mine. If not, consider yourself lucky. And this is just a little bit more difficult because I have a lot of shit in the way here. But, we will get to that and correct that once we can move things around a little bit better. All right, quick disconnect off and lift from this end. And it is somewhat in place. All right, so we got the passenger side line here, driver side line here. Go ahead and undo the quick connects and get these puppies snapped in. All right, that one is done. That one is done. And with a little bit of prayer and a little bit of adjustments, we should be. Uh, Pretty good to jack this thing up here. Of uh, my beautiful assistant, uh, we got the quick jacks. Um, we got the set screws out, we got them bled. And we're gonna try and see if these go up now. One thing the instructions didn't mention is you actually have to put pressure in the lines first, duh, because it doesn't come with any fluid. And once you do that, then you can let them down and then bleed out the lines. So we're gonna go ahead and try and go up on these. Uh, Gavin, you wanna watch the blocks on the other side, make sure everything's lining up. I'm gonna go up real slow. Just tell me once they start making contact and we'll check them out.
touch it over there? Is it, are they both touching over there? Barely touching. Huh? This one's barely touching. Like, it's lined up fine. Lock back here, flip it up. Or right, look, come here, look. Flip this around like this. There you go, watch out. Yep, yeah, watch out, I'm going down. So what I saw here is it was pushing into the side skirts. This block was pushing up on the side skirts a little bit. So I'm going to double check, see how I can rearrange these things. But so far we got pressure, so that's good. We'll be back. So we got the GT500 in the air. Um, I haven't got under it yet, but just looking under the back, you know, it is nice to have the back up that high. What I'm not liking, and I may need to get extensions, if you can see, this side's not pushing up as much on the uh, side skirt. Um, it's pushing up a little. Let's look at the back. Back is pushing up on the side skirt a little bit. We'll go over to the other side. So I may need to get extensions for these. Um, I was really trying to do it without these, but um, so that side's not pushing on the side skirt as much. Right there it is though. So, um, as you can see, it's just a couple inches short of the actual jacking point. I'm not sure if I can, uh, if I can chop those down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and call quick jacks, see what they suggest before I blow another 200 bucks on extensions. Uh, but you can see the car is up in the air. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get it down and evaluate and assess, and uh, we'll be back with a final synopsis. <laughs> So we have a successful lift and takedown. Uh, just got to check out these pads. See what they look like. All right. So you can see crimps on the edges of the pads. Um, I had them all the way pushed in inboard. I may need to trim these a little, but I'm not sure. Or possibly try smaller pads. See what the other side looks like. It doesn't look quite as bad. Let's see what kind of damage we're pressing it did on the side skirts. Sky side skirts did push back out, uh, but I am going to need to readdress that. Uh, so it is about a month later. You can see my garage is still trashy, still looks like shit, so I did not successfully clean up the garage. But what I have successfully done is I have successfully used these quick jacks probably a dozen times. So I will tell you what I am finding with this scenario. Um, number one, I do like the quick jacks. They do make my life easier. I do not have to use the ramps. I keep them one in that area right there all the time. 
one over on the other side, and I just push them in, use them as I need them. And you'll see, I've got electric since then. That side, that side, and that side. So I have plenty of electric. I keep the quick jack plugged in over there. With the compressor, I keep the quick jack compressor there, lines, uh, you know, I just push these underneath the car and I rock and roll. Um, I've had the wheels off a billion times, as you see, I have different wheels now. Magic, magically, I got different wheels within the same video. Um, so I've had these wheels off a billion times, swapping around tires, wheels, painting the wheels, unpainting the wheels, shit like that. I did some other work on it. Now, I will say I have not gotten underneath the car and stayed underneath the car for any long periods of time. So I cannot give you guys a full review yet what it's like working underneath the car. But I will say for the other stuff, doing suspension, getting the wheels off, etc., etc., my life is significantly easier. Now, if I could just get rid of this wall over here, get another couple feet out, two feet out, then I would be in pure utopia. That's not the case, so I got to work with the best I have. If I pull the car in a little bit closer to this pole here, um, it does make my life a little bit easier on that side to get the wheel off. Um, that being said, I am finding what works, what doesn't work for getting these up underneath. So if you saw earlier in the video, um, I had the blocks actually this way, and you can see where it's chewing into the block. Um, I was going on the pinch welds. I don't know if that's correct or incorrect. Again, I jack the car up from the subframe, then go up from the back on the diff. That's how I've always jacked up cars. That's what I know. I've never jacked up cars from the side. So you guys tell me, is it correct to jack up? Uh, with these blocks on the pinch welds or am I doing that wrong? So I called quick jacks. They basically tell me, oh, we make a special uh, block for the pinch welds. I thought that these were for the pinch welds. Yes, they're working on the pinch welds. That front one is compressing a lot though. I don't like how it's compressing. I don't like how it's pushing into my side skirts. It's not causing damage that I know of. I just don't like it and I don't feel safe under it um, with it like that. Um, the other thing is, and you're not going to be able to tell from the way the car sits, but the car has a slight rake, so the car, car is, you know, a little bit like that because the drag radials are so tall. Um, so what you'll see is the back, and you saw this on earlier in the video, the front one's going to start the lift and the back one's not going to hit right away. Um, I mean, I've been working around that. It's a little dicey, but I've been working around that. What I've been finding is if you're familiar with the S197 cores, and I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get enough clearance to look underneath it. If you can see where your pinch weld is, right past your pinch weld, you have your frame rail there. Now what I've been doing, the last couple times I've been jacking it up, is I've actually rotated these blocks. Uh, instead of having them that way, rotate them that way and I push these all the way up on all the way out outboard to touch the inside of the frame rail and I've been jacking up that way. Um, I have been feeling that that is probably going to be a better way of jacking instead of going on the pinch welds but again you guys tell me if you're finding better ways of doing this that I'm just not aware of because I'm not familiar with that please let me know. Um, I'm finding that that does work pretty good. Um, I think I, I prefer that to going on the pinch welds um, but I may look at the ZL1 um, pinch weld adapters as well. But again, because these are the standard length and not the extended length, I don't know if that's going to work out for me because um, I think those ZL1 adapters go on the cutouts on the side skirts. And because this isn't the extended version, I don't know that it's going to work like that. So I have to do some measuring. Um, but I think going inboard a little bit more on the frame rails is helping out. Um, if you look in the video, you're going to see right around this bottom bar here, when it's lifting up, you're going to see it kind of like, I don't know, it's hard to explain. It, it, it's almost like it's lifting up in the middle while it's settling and then it settles down. Um, honestly, that's probably why I haven't worked underneath these that much yet. Um, it's, it's probably fine. It just scares the shit out of you when you see something like that. Um, when the car is up on these, uh, the car feels pretty solid. Honestly, I think the car feels more solid when the blocks are the other way and the um, treads uh, go into the pinch welds. Um, I do think it is more stable that way. Uh, but again, I'm still kind of figuring things out as I go. Um, right now I have the car pulled pretty far forward. Um, you're gonna see there's tape lines 
uh, on the floor there. So I usually pull the car right about the center of that tape line and it still gives me some room to get behind the door here. Now what I will say is they tell you the car moves you know, very little when it parallelograms and goes up this way. Um, when it is in this far, it is tight to get through the front up there. It moves more than a little bit. I'm gonna say it's over six inches. I mean, honestly, it's probably closer to 10 inches getting closer to a foot maybe. Um, so that is a little bit of an issue. Um, so when I know I'm gonna use it, I'll try and pull the car back a little bit. Again, you know, I'm trying to get away from having to do shit like that. I just wanna pull it in and use it. Does that work with it up that far? Yes, but if I have to work in the engine bay, it gets tight. So um, I'm probably gonna redo these tape lines. Uh, these were from the prior owner. He also had S197 cars. Um, I'm probably gonna retape those and get it to where I can get the car, you know, just barely passing that door because I'd rather use the front area than the back area. I don't really give a shit about the back area, but I'm paranoid. I fucked up the back of a car one time uh, from the handle down there, came up and scratched up my uh, trunk lid and back bumper. So I try not to keep it too close to the back. Um, otherwise though, these things have been working pretty damn good. Um, I really don't have too many complaints other than figuring out the placement and trying to figure out what works best for this car. So any of you S197 guys, I will tell you, the regular uh, 5000 jack, the non-extended version, works fine on the S197s. I overthought this. I was like, oh, maybe I got to get the extended version because technically, you know, the, the, the jacking points from Ford are more than 60 inches. This works fine. You can work around it. It's not a huge deal with the car stable. Somebody's probably gonna fucking chastise me and tell me how I'm gonna die underneath these things. I don't really think that's gonna happen. So um, I think it works fine the way it is. More importantly for the other cars, you know, the, the SN95, when it was here, the extended ones would not have gotten under it. Um, the Integra, the extended ones would not get under it. I'm probably willing to bet that the Escape would probably be a little goofy too. Um, so I think this is probably the best bet. If I need longer, I can always get the attachments, but they cost money. Um, other than that, I don't know. Um, when these are fully up, you know, the, the, when, you, when you're up on that parallelogram, they seem like they can rock a little bit. I mean, they look goofy. They look a little bit scary. Um, again, I have not spent a ton of time underneath it yet just because I'm still a little bit leery. I know I probably shouldn't be leery, but you know, I'm a little leery. It's something new. I've been jacking up cars the same way for a billion years, it seems like, and that's just what I'm used to. So um, with some time, as I get used to it, I'll post a follow-up video as I get comfortable. Um, so far though, again, I am pretty happy with them. Still a little salty over the price, but man, so far I gotta tell you guys, um, I went from, half hour 45 minutes an hour sometimes to get the car in the air this car specifically i struggled with getting to the back points um, i just wasn't happy with it so i feel safer on these so far and it saves a lot of time so this jack is going to be gotten gone um, i got a whole bunch of jack stands back there i'm going to move all this shit to the shed that's going to be a lot more space i have in here once i can actually clean stuff up um, so stay tuned for further videos guys this video is over a month old I'm just getting to it now. I got a bunch of shit done to the car, a bunch of new stuff we're doing to the car, so stay tuned. Um, again, guys, I really appreciate your support. Um, we hit over a thousand viewers back before I even got these. So guys, we're killing it. I appreciate the support since then. I've gotten a few hundred more subscribers, a couple hundred. I don't even know what I'm up to now, but your support is fantastic. Thank you very much. Please. Uh, keep on watching, keep subscribing, pass it on your friends. If there's any videos you want to see, if you want to see more racing videos, hit me up. If you guys want to see videos of some of my, some of my other friends' cars, hit me up. Uh, Brian with the 335 wants me to do a video on his car. Um, Michael with the ATSV uh, offered to let me borrow the car, do a video on that ATSV. That thing is crazy. It's an awesome little car. Um, I got a few other guys, uh, Dustin with the, the Turbo S550. Wanted me to do a video on his car. We could probably do a video on Junior's Whipple S550. So guys, we got cars to be able to do content. If you guys want the content, let me know. If nobody's interested and they just want to see GT500 junk content, whatever. Um, we're going to go ahead and keep them posting the content. Guys, again, thank you. I appreciate it. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you. 
keep watching. I'll keep making, and we'll catch you on the next one.